Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for the museum and the organizers for this really important event. Um, I'm really happy to be here and to see everyone. So just until, OK, so alone we'll get this sorted. Um, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> so I will try to answer the question whether Israel has a food policy. Uh, and maybe we can also answer that together, uh, but uh, also along the way. Uh, I will also try to, uh, and I think this resonates with many of the things that have been brought up here before uh, by the previous speakers. Um, I will try to touch on some policy uh, measures and maybe we can also elaborate later on how to, to get this, to this position where we actually have uh, affordable, accessible food for everyone, et cetera. Uh, so maybe just a very short reminder uh, about what uh, Alon here also mentioned uh, before on the role of food, food systems in the climate crisis. Uh, so food systems are responsible for about a third of uh, all anthropogenic uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Within that, animal agriculture is responsible for about 57 to 70 percent of emissions in a life cycle analysis framework. And it only provides 18% of the calories, sorry, yeah, and 37% uh, of the protein. So it's extremely wasteful. Uh, it uses significant um, measures of, of, of soil, creates land changes of, of uh, human fresh water. It is a major uh, driver for biodiversity loss, as, as we heard. Um, there's about 69% um, decline in all animal populations since the 1970s, so within about 50 years. Uh, and it has significant health-related health costs, and um, I won't get too much into that, but um, uh, a model that uh, analyzed the, the, the health implications of uh, processed meat and red meat uh, consumption uh, concluded that uh, the, the healthcare costs would be about $285 billion uh, a year. Um, so that is something that is also, should also be in this equation. Um, so I'm sorry, I have some, some infographics that are in Hebrew, so uh, I, I can also explain this later. Uh, so just a word on, uh, on food sovereignty and, and resilience. Uh, in Israel, we have 80% of the calories are uh, imported. That includes also uh, animal products, but also the, uh, the feed uh, for animals. So even in uh, different industries like uh, poultry in Israel, which is we say that we provide the entire uh, consumption of poultry, it's actually based on important grains. So we're extremely um, reliant on that. So just, uh, so what is food system transformation? Maybe I won't get too much into that, but the word food system transformation or uh, this kind of like uh, really, um, Substantial measures is not uh, just uh, words of, of, of activists. Uh, it's also the, 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 the words coming out of the IPCC and other uh, bodies uh, in its report on the significance of keeping global warming under 1.5 uh, degrees from 2018. The IPCC said that we have to um, make rapid, far reaching and unprecedented uh, changes in all aspects of society. Uh, so, and that is by 2030. Uh, another substantial report uh, is by the International Platform for the Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. Again, touching on the decline, the unprecedented decline of nature, we have a million species of animals and plants at risk of extinction. And they also said there is some hope. I mean, nature can be conserved, restored, and used sustainably while other global uh, societal goals are sim simultaneously met. But this will require urgent and con uh, concerted uh, efforts fostering transformative change. So <clears throat> there is an agreement that a transformative change should take place. This is not just a measure here, a measure there, maybe some more information for consumers. Um, so how do we respond to that? Basically, it's not really clear. Uh, I mean, to be honest, Israel doesn't have a uh, food policy. We also know that not having a national food strategy, 
We know that not having a strategy is also a strategy. It is also a policy. Uh, food policy is uh, being uh, constructed. Maybe it's it's uh, it's more accurate to say at this moment, but we don't really see um, how and how we are supposed to reach uh, or or implement these substantial measures that are necessary. And they're extremely necessary also in Israel, specifically as a, as a hotspot for climate change with all the impacts that we have here. Um, and I will get to all the, also to other factors. Uh, so maybe, maybe some of you already know this, uh, this graph. Uh, this is the, um, these are the, 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 the comparative calculations that, that are available on uh, meat consumption in OECD countries. So, as you can see here, uh, Israel is one of the largest consumers per capita uh, of, of meat, uh, the largest consumer of, of chicken and uh, the fourth uh, of beef after Argentina, the United States and Brazil. So we, we, we give the, the Middle East a very good, uh, I know, a very honorable place uh, in, uh, in the midst of these uh, um, American uh, countries. Uh, and the, the increase uh, of the consumption of beef, I mean, Israel has been very fond of beef, but this is not just, um, uh, uh, you know, um, sort of like a natural phenomenon. Um, we, what we see here is, uh, is, a, is a 50% of, uh, of beef uh, consumption uh, in Israel within the last six years. Um, so how does a market, Behave like that uh, when there is such uh, uh, such such a such a leap in the in the consumption of a product, and it's not just a leap in the consumption of a product, but also one of the most harmful uh, products uh, in in terms of uh, of the climate crisis in terms of of food. Um, so, I when we have these discussions also with with authorities in Israel, they. Uh, they refer to this strictly as a measure of, of as, a, as a matter of supply and demand. So, personally, I would like to put a question mark uh, on this uh, on this on this uh, theory because we know that markets can also be uh, uh, intervened in. They can be shaped. Power in the food system can really shape also consumer preferences. Other measures, and this would be too much to translate, but I will just uh, say that there is at least a, a correlation. And I also argue that, um, uh, the, that there is also um, a clear connection between the, um, the, the canceling of the tariff on the importation of, of calves for in the live exports and other, other measures, uh, including other exemptions from tariff, et cetera, that basically have flooded the market uh, in beef. And I use this as a... Um, just as, a, as, a, as an example, um, this wasn't just, um, you know, the removal of a tariff wasn't just, it was just one side of the coin. Uh, because removing tariff means that you're exposing uh, the local farmers to competition from abroad. And the way to, uh, to sort of balance this uh, by the state was to uh, increase the subsidies for uh, local uh, beef farmers. But this wasn't enough. Uh, the other part, and that maybe also refers to how uh, pref preferences can be shaped. Um, the state also allocated uh, about four and a half million shekels for marketing uh, strategies for the beef industry. Uh, so I don't know, um, personally, I don't go out and buy so much beef. So I don't know if you can re really recognize where the beef comes from, where the meat comes from. But generally, it was intended to increase the, um, the, the demand for Israeli uh, raised uh, beef. And, but it also says, and I didn't touch this with, except for this uh, frame, we got this through uh, freedom of information request. The, it says the goal of the activity is to increase the demand uh, for uh, Israeli fresh beef. Uh, and in these uh, strategies, uh, also, um, you could see uh, th this was conducted in 2018, so in the midst of, of this process, uh, you can see in various forms, various methods of, of, uh, of advertising, including uh, hidden advertisement or sort of like uh, clickbaits and 
and these kind of things that you can find in social media or uh, are really um, like popular um, uh, news websites, etc. And on the other hand, and after that, I'm finishing with the Hebrew slides, I think. Uh, we have also a very uh, substantial gap in the um, monthly um, consumption of fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, when they are, when if you look at it according to, uh, to deciles, so you can see that the consumption of, uh, of, of vegetables is uh, about double in the, in the, in the top 10 decile than the lowest uh, first, and the consumption of, of fruits is actually more than double. So this is going on at the same time. People have uh, increased accessibility of, of, of beef uh, and other harmful products. Also now processed meat has been, the tariff from the importation of processed meat was also uh, removed, um, but there is insufficient accessibility and affordability when it comes to um, fresh fruits and vegetables. So we also see that if we just let can someone maybe um, take care of that while I continue? Um, so food systems are, are really important, but they're also very vulnerable. They're vulnerable, and this is manifested in, in different ways. Um, yeah. Uh, so we heard, we saw how they are impacted by, by global crisis, how they are shaped by different landscapes of inequality. Uh, we see more the solutions are going to more and more intensification and increased commodification of, of, of agriculture or food as a, as a commodity uh, rather than uh, something that is really in, uh, inherent to, to basic rights. Um, we, and when there is, that the state must provide to, to the citizens. Uh, we see increased uh, or a large extent of harmful subsidies. I'm, I'll try to get to that later. And the way that the market works is also, um, uh, it, it looks a lot on towards exportation. Uh, we have this expectation on, on for, for cheap food. The cost of living is sort of like the mantra that every politician knows how to recite. Uh, and some of these measures, which I actually uh, presented before, were the, the rolling result of, uh, of, of demands that came after the social protests in 2011. So that was kind of, the, the solution, let them eat beef in that sense. Um, and we see how uh, business as usual approach uh, really uh, puts us in an off track to, uh, to more and more uh, social gaps. And it allows more and more consolidation in the food system and, and gen uh, generating more power and influences on policies and on, uh, on, and on uh, market behavior. So there is no just an, 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 uh, an, acknowledging, an acknowledgement for uh, transformation when it comes to, uh, to the climate crisis, but also with, specifically with regard to, uh, to food systems. Uh, the scientific group of the uh, United Nations Food Systems Summit, which convened for the first time two, th two years ago, um, uh, concluded that without a shift to healthy and sustainable consumption patterns, we will fail to achieve the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the goals under the Paris Agreement and the Convention on Biodiversity. And the IPCC keeps uh, presenting over and over um, the conclusions uh, that, um, whoops, uh, that balance and sustainable uh, healthy diets and reduce food losses and waste uh, present an important opportunities for adaptation and mitigation uh, while generating significant co-benefits in terms of biodiversity and human health. So I put here uh, so the One Health uh, uh, perspective maybe on this, but we, we can just maybe as a, uh, as a teaser for a discussion later, but there's also uh, some things to say about that, uh, which is more than the time we have. So, oh, sorry, we'll try to, to make these slides accessible as well. Um, so Israel does look towards uh, uh, building its, uh, its food policy. There is also inter-office, inter intergovernmental uh, work on those issues. 
Uh, and before the, the, the Food Systems Summit two, two years ago, Israel, uh, also as other countries, uh, submitted a national pathway document for healthy, equitable, and sustainable food systems. And in this document, uh, Israel, um, uh, that Israel presented, it, it stated clearly that healthy, affordable, and sustainable diet would be the public norm in, two, in 2030. It will be based on the nutritional guidelines set by the Ministry of Health, and it will instruct other policies cross offices in economic, agriculture, environmental, education, etc. So, basing the the consumption uh, on the nutritional guidelines set by the Ministry of Health, not only passes a message that the Ministry of Health is the competent authority to uh, make uh, public decisions on on health and not, uh, um, and they, they opposed, for example, the removal of the tariff uh, from processed meat, which is um, uh, considered uh, uh, to cause cancer, uh, not considered it is a, a verified cause, uh, cause of cancer. Um, it also means reducing uh, the consumption of, uh, of animal uh, protein in 50% by 2030. Um, it also stated that would, there would be a profound reduction, oh, sorry, I, I just referred to that, that it would implement cost internalization mechanisms, it would support sustainable agriculture, and improve animal welfare standards. And this is also important because improving animal welfare standards goes uh, in contradiction with the in, uh, further industrialization of, of animal uh, industries. Uh, and the, it goes hand in hand with uh, reducing the consumption of animal products. Uh, so we need to see how these uh, are being implemented. Uh, and I have to say that until now, the, the implementation has been uh, very much lagging uh, uh, behind. Um, most of what is uh, being uh, discussed or offered uh, relates to uh, giving consumers more uh, information. Um, instead of supervising the cost of food, perhaps, uh, then there is a, um, a, a comparative uh, report that is published every few months in the, in the website of the Ministry of Economics, and you can see which is the uh, cheapest uh, retailer chain, these kind of things that people generally don't really look into before they go and do shopping. Um, other uh, solutions are being um, targeted towards um, cultured meat, um, and the sort of, um, uh, how to say, marketing of Israel as a food tech uh, power, uh, even though we don't really know yet what are the uh, health implications of cultured meat. And we can say that uh, consumption of plant-based products is actually more sustainable than that. Um, so what I would try to offer uh, in the time also that I have, are several uh, measures that can be uh, used to go from uh, from this pathway to an actual uh, policy, a coherent policy. Uh, five minutes, okay. Uh, so first would be the institutional measures, um, and that would mean, you know, stop um, stop transferring the responsibility to the to the individual person, and I I say this also with regard. Um, to, um, to social movements sometimes. There are significant um, uh, moral um, consequences of uh, consuming animal products. But if we want to really reach uh, this uh, decline in, um, in, in meat consumption, we really need to, to think uh, as a system and on the system mechanisms and failures that allow this excessive uh, and wasteful uh, uh, marketing uh, operations to to to, uh, uh, to 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 work now. Uh, so the national food strategy uh, would have to be aligned with the Ministry of Health recommendations, as was obligated. Um, meat reduction can be uh, implemented in different uh, forms of public procurement through uh, through tenders, through public services that provide uh, food, and. That, that means also uh, providing uh, equitable access to healthy plant-based food for all parts of society. It's not about just removing uh, one part of the plate, but also improving the affordability and accessibility 
uh, and sufficiency of the food that people consume. Um, it also has to be implemented in a national and municipal climate plans. We also see that uh, across the world. And of course, as Emily also referred to the prevention of food waste. Um, we really have to rethink how uh, we support um, industrial agriculture or agriculture in generally. Uh, in the world, there are about uh, more than half a, 500 billion uh, US dollars that are con uh, considered uh, to be either price distorting, distorting or harmful to nature and health. In Israel, it's about 300 from the research that myself and uh, Yotam Shlomo from Bar Ilan University have been uh, concluding in the past years. We, um, uh, we, we, we conclude that uh, there are about 300 million shekels allocated each year uh, to animal agriculture in direct payments and not just the, also the indirect payments or losses to the, to the uh, market uh, that are associated with that. That also includes, I will not go into all the details, but that also includes um, uh, payments to um, coupled um, uh, production that, that the, 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 the payment is given according to the extent of production, so you have an incentive to overproduce. Um, mostly in the Galilee law, uh, we have uh, ma many uh, subsidies are, are given to, 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 to basically to businesses, to food businesses that basically do not internalize uh, the risks or the costs involved with having such, such, uh, such an operation. And we, ha we also have subsidies that are paid uh, to meet minimal environmental standards saying, Okay, you are violating the law, but we will pay you now money in order to make uh, to 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 have you better aligned with with these practices. We will not enforce the law; we will pay you instead. Um, okay, um, so I will just go over this very quickly. But um, the repurposing of agricultural support should be allocated on positive externalities, the the benefits that society gains uh, from. Uh, um, uh, from uh, what is being the the, the 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 farming that is being supported, it has to be given much more to soil uh, preservation and prevention of environmental hazards. I mentioned the decoupled support before. Um, implementation of polluter pays principle has to be part. This is a basic environmental uh, justice policy and has to be part of animal agriculture as well. Um, through uh, repurposing agricultural support can also. Uh, strengthen the local agriculture and have it uh, prepared to the cause, uh, the indications of climate crisis. And it would also have to uh, include a framework for just transi transition for the animal agriculture uh, sector. We we need to also discuss that. We need to also think of how we expand coalitions in this field. And um, the other part on how to make sustainable consumption uh, available for society. Uh, we have different mechanisms that are very uh, stubbornly not being implemented, uh, such as um, placing a zero VAT on legumes and whole grains, uh, having a healthy supervised food basket, uh, understanding that placing budget in for affordable and healthy food uh, needs to go beyond uh, the revenues that maybe we get from uh, not subsidizing harmful products. Uh, we, we need to implement stricter uh, tobacco uh, marketing rules as we do with, with tobacco, um, use other uh, methods like nudges and uh, labeling is also important. I put it here because I believe in it, but I also, I, I should also warn that this is also sometimes used as a measure not to do other things. So we need to also be careful uh, with that. Um, so just to conclude this, um, we need, these mechanisms to ensure a transition to healthy and sustainable diets that are resilient uh, to the climate uh, and ecological crisis, which means they can keep functioning even with uh, unexpected disturbances. Uh, and we need this to, uh, to and we need to make fundamental changes in how the system works uh, in order to reach the goals that we are set for ourselves. Um, we also need to question the premise of animal products as a basic food. Um, especially in the, in the face of increased pressure to further uh, reduce prices. Um, it, goes, it just goes on and on uh, and, and on how uh, even uh, carcinogenic food uh, is uh, basic right. Uh, we also need to examine 
food systems through a framework of environmental justice to ask who profits from it, who shapes it, and who is part of the decision making. And we also need to, uh, to examine it through the framework of, of food justice, uh, one in which animal protection is also uh, a social issue on the side of justice, 